Aya. This is Druid Cat, and today we're diving into a massive update to the Comfy UI workflow for consistent character influences. I've added several workflows to my Flux template that introduce try-ons, allowing you to overlay clothing or objects onto existing images. This means you can add shoes, outfits, or even accessories to photos effortlessly. This update is a game changer for e-commerce, product photography, and fashion visualization. Even better, you don't need a high-end GPU. We'll be using the Flux open source model with Comfy UI on RunPod, so even a basic computer can handle it. Fun fact, why did the cat sit on the computer? Because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse. This course requires access to my Patreon exclusive materials, so if you want the full experience, consider supporting the channel. Before diving in, here's a key tip for training LoRa models. Don't just focus on facial shots. In generated images, a trained character may sometimes have an oversized face compared to the rest of the body. This happens because LoRa strongly favors the dataset's most frequent elements, and if there are too many headshots, the model will disproportionately emphasize facial features. Since LoRa training is highly precise and straightforward, careful dataset preparation is essential. To build a more balanced database, consider using an image-to-video generator like WAN, which currently delivers excellent results. A dedicated WAN template is also coming soon. By generating a camera rotation sequence around your character, capturing multiple angles and varying expressions, and extracting individual frames, you create a richer data set. Using today's template, you can also easily modify clothing, hairstyles, and other attributes, making your model more versatile. Take this to heart. Creating a high-quality LoRa, a character that remains consistent and adaptable for future projects, is an art. It requires careful planning, a diverse data set, and a deep understanding of how training biases affect the final output. Connect to RunPod and sign up for an account if you haven't already. Deposit $10 into your account to ensure you don't run out of credits too quickly. Don't go overboard. If you forget to shut things down, that extra cash will vanish into the pod void. Click on Deploy Pod, then choose Community Cloud. Select an RTX 3090 or 4090 GPU, though the template does not require high-end hardware since it only handles still graphics. Once the pod loads, click Connect and wait for the environment to initialize. Two ports will appear, 3020 for Jupyter Notebook and 8888 for Comfy UI. Open both. Jupyter Notebook functions as your file system and mini operating system, all within your browser. Navigate to Comfy UI and click on the folder icon to access your workflow files. Now let's explore the newly added workflows. Step 1. The first workflow added is the simple try-on workflow. This method allows you to add clothing to an existing image with minimal effort. Load the image of the clothing into the Clothes Image node. Load the model's photo into the People Photo node. Use the Segment Anything node to determine which part of the image should be replaced. In the Florence Run node, set the prompt to Clothes. The workflow uses automasking, so the system will detect and replace only the clothing section. Click play on the queue, and in a moment you'll see your model wearing the reference image's outfit. This method also works for shoes. Simply change the Florence 2 Run prompt to Shoes, and provide separate images of feet and footwear. Step 2. The Flux Try-On Automasking workflow expands on this by adjusting the model's pose to match the reference image. This ensures that clothing overlays correctly onto the body and retains a natural fit. It's a useful tool for aligning clothing with complex angles and postures. I encourage you to experiment on your own. We won't dwell on this any longer. The next workflow is much more exciting. The best addition in this update is the virtual try-on workflow. 
This method blends two images seamlessly while maintaining realistic lighting and shadows. It is perfect for e-commerce previews, digital fashion design, and creative compositions. The workflow may appear complex, but it revolves around five essential nodes. Two nodes serve as input images, one for reference and the other for the target. In the prompt for both, specify which item should be masked and replaced. In this example, entering dress replaces only the dress from the reference image. The results are highly satisfying and the final image can be saved from the outputs folder or directly from the nodes preview menu. This workflow is not limited to clothing. You can use it to merge elements like graffiti with walls. By refining the masking prompt, the system integrates new elements naturally. In one test, a green text overlay remained visible against a shaded area, demonstrating the workflow's precision in identifying contrast and structure. The cat's left ear got cut off, but that's due to how the language model masked the area and slight resolution differences that caused it not to fit properly. However, what's truly impressive is that the model correctly identified a shaded region while ensuring that the bright green text remained clearly visible and well contrasted. This workflow definitely deserves high praise and will undoubtedly see a lot of use. Step 3. Many users have asked how to make results more realistic, especially when it comes to skin detail. To address this, I've added several LoRa's that enhance realism. When selecting LoRa's, browse the available options and experiment with different models. Searching Civit AI for trigger words can also help refine the generation process. I have also included a new fine-tuned model called Jibmix Flux, which introduces additional realism and a more stylized art direction. Of course, you can add your own models using Jupyter Notebook, which acts as a file system under port 8888. I don't recommend using drag and drop for model uploads, as it's extremely slow. Instead, navigate to the comfy UI slash models slash onenet and open a terminal there. Ask ChatGPT to generate a curl command with. L follows redirects. Important for cases like yours where the server sends a redirect. F ensures that curl fails silently on errors. For downloading your model, provide the download link, ensure the model is named with the .gguf extension, and insert your Civit AI API token which you can find at the bottom of the settings page under Add API Key. Once ChatGPT gives you the command, simply paste it into the terminal and the model will download automatically. After downloading, refresh Comfy UI. Since I use GGUF nodes to prevent the template from taking forever to load, only GGUF models should be placed in the UNet folder. If you want to use full SafeTensor's diffusion models, place them in the diffusion models folder and replace the load GGUF node with load diffusion model. Step 4. For those struggling with overly smooth or unrealistic skin textures, the simple upscaling with skin detail workflow provides an easy fix. This workflow enhances image clarity while preserving skin realism. It uses two key nodes. Scale, Image, to Total Pixels, and Basic Scheduler Denoise. Increasing the Total Pixels setting generates a larger, more detailed image at the cost of longer processing times. The Denoise value determines how much additional detail is introduced. If you only want a higher resolution version of the image, keep Denoise low. Increasing the Denoise value significantly alters the image by generating new textures. This workflow is very simple, so we won't spend more time analyzing it. Step 5. We have a new approach to inpainting here. One based on the base model rather than the fill model. This comes with several advantages and it's important to understand the differences. The base model performs inpainting literally, utilizing the existing areas of the input image. It works somewhat like image to image processing. Right-click on the image and choose Open in Mask Editor. We use negative as a layer mask here. 
we still have the denoising strength parameter which controls how much the image should be altered. The base model preserves the colors and objects from the input image, meaning that if a low denoise value is used, the generated object should closely resemble the original. One key advantage is that this method allows adding text, which the fill model does not support. Another important use case is LoRa support. If, for example, you want to add your character to an existing image, you simply insert a load LoRa model only node after the model node and connect the model output where it was before. You can think of it like adding train cars. Just attach your LoRa and it's ready to go. Step 6. At the end of your session, remember to shut down your RunPod instance. If you plan to return soon, stopping the pod is sufficient, otherwise fully shut it down to prevent unnecessary charges. Before closing, download all generated images from the Outputs folder. You can access them via the file browser on the Books icon. I cover this process in detail in my previous videos, so check those out for a step-by-step -step guide. To access this exclusive RunPod Comfy UI template, join my Patreon. This update is packed with features designed to improve workflow efficiency and creative flexibility. Thank you for following this course. If you found it helpful, leave a like and subscribe. It helps me continue making high quality content. For those interested in more advanced AI techniques, book a private session with me on Fiverr where I provide in-depth training beyond what's covered here. See you soon, hey!